So in this talk, we will present some solutions for the treatment of verbal multi-word expressions in the Croatian verb lexicon Verbion. It is a work in progress and we are still developing our database. So uh, all your suggestions are more uh, than welcome and you will see we don't know how to deal with some things. Uh, this project began this year and one of the objectives is to create a database that will contain description of the 500 most frequent uh, verbs in creation. More precisely, verb sense and valency frame is based on examples from the corpora. And each uh, verb, each uh, verb sense, example and idiom will be translated into English. And some colleagues show their interest to translate them into Spanish and French also. And they were a suggestion to translate into Polish uh, since uh, many students in Poland study Croatia. I mean, not many, but for Croatia, uh, many students. Uh, the list was extracted from several corpora containing more than 100 million tokens. And we also compare, compared this list with the list compiled at the Institute for the, uh, for the Creation Language. We have an Excel file that contains 24,000 verbs, but some of them are obsolete and I never heard of them. So we compared this list in Excel file uh, to the Creation School Dictionary and the Creation Language Portal, which is largest uh, freely available dictionary. And still some verbs were not attested, nor in the corpora, nor in the dictionaries. And then we Googled them and some of them were attested and they usually belong to some special field domains, their verbs as uh, terms. So we wanted that uh, one of our results would be also a publicly available list of uh, Croatian verbs. Uh, we believe that is going to be more than 20,000 uh, verbs. So it won't be any more uh, only in our Excel, uh, Excel files in our computers, then it will be uh, available. Uh, we took 1,000 verbs from each corpora and divided them into semantic classes. And then we had to decide whether we should select 500 verbs based on a semantic class, for example, seven semantic classes, and then uh, describe them, or 500 verbs based on frequency. And then we decided based on frequency, as we promised, 500 in the most frequent uh, verbs. Uh, verbs are described at several levels. Uh, here are some general information, verb, English equivalent, and uh, morphological aspect. And then we have morphological block, which is not directly related to valency, but we decided to include it uh, since we believe that it could be useful both for non-native speakers and also native speakers, because we included some tenses that are not so frequently used, such as aorist and uh, imperfect. Each sense has definition, definition in English. Uh, then we uh, determine semantic class based on Levin's and uh, Verbnet's uh, classification. And we also added the uh, Verbnet uh, classification. And you can see an empty field, semantic class syntactic. Uh, it is awaiting for our classification. By the end of the project, we, after we process all verbs, uh, we, we plan to propose our classification based on Croatia, Croatian data. Uh, each sense has one or few valency frames, and each valency frame has one or more examples. Uh, this is an example from the corpus and its translation into English. And we have an analysis. Uh, at the syntactic level, we use syntactic phrase, ty phrase types. We believe that is the most convenient way because people from different linguistic backgrounds are familiar with uh, syntactic phrase types. Uh, since creation has seven morphologically realized cases, we also de determine which case and uh, prepositions are used. For semantic roles, uh, we mainly adopted verbnet semantic roles with a few modifications, and we also provided possibility to assign two semantic roles. Uh, frame elements from FrameNet and also lexical units, uh, which are sometimes mandatory, which I'm going to explain uh, soon. In this presentation, we try to answer these research questions. How should reflexive verbs, uh, verbs with the reflexive marker se, be treated? Should they be considered as separate lemmas, sublemmas of intransitive counterparts, or one of verb senses? Second, what syntactic label and semantic role should be assigned to a predicative noun in light verb constructions? And should verbal idioms be included, and if so, at which level of description? Uh, regarding reflexive verbs, we looked at a few Croatian general online dictionaries, how they treated them. Uh, Croatian language portal, which is uh, the largest freely available dictionary. Croatian school dictionary and Croatian web dictionary, which is corpus based. And also valence lexicons such as Crovalex, uh, which is based on the Czech Valex 1.0 and it has around 1000 uh, verbs. Eglava, which has only 57 uh, psych verbs and it is based on the German Evalbu and we looked at the Czech Valex as a role model. 
Regarding uh, reflexive verbs and their classification, in Croatian there are several classifications, and this is the most uh, accepted one. So we have inherently reflexive verbs or reflexiva tantum. They cannot appear without the reflexive marker se, for example, smiati se, natjecati se. Then so-called proper or true reflexive verbs, they are transitive verbs whose object can be replaced with the, by the reflexive pronoun sebe. For example, češljati koga, komb someone, i češljati sebe, komb oneself. But they are a bit problematic, we will see in the next slide. Then reciprocal uh, reflexive verbs, such as kiss each other and deride, they have transitive and reflexive counterparts, but the reflexive marker se cannot be replaced with sebe. For example, igrati i igrati se. We cannot say igrati sebe. There are many discussions what is se in uh, creation. Uh, some authors uh, view it as a pronoun, some consider it uh, as a particle, and uh, some think that it's a particle with reflexiva tantum and derived reflexives, while a pronoun with proper reflexives. But in the recent studies, uh, it has been shown that they are not interchangeable. For example, we can say Maria se počešljala, Maria komp her hair, but we cannot say Maria je sebe without context. It sounds unnatural to native speakers. But we can say Maria je prvo počešljala sebe, pa dijete. Maria first comb her hair, then uh, the children, childs. Uh, so we need semantic and pragmatic reasons to use sebe instead of se. And se is an integrated part of reflexive verbs, so we decided to treat reflexive verbs as separate uh, lemmas. In dictionaries, the uh, situation is simple re with reflexiva tantum, it's headword, of course. While situation with uh, so-called proper reflexives is a bit complicated, and uh, it's not uh, coherently it's not coherent in one dictionary, let alone across dictionaries. For example, here we have bat. The first meaning is to wash somebody in a bathtub or container filled with water, and it can be transitive and reflexive. So they put se in parentheses next to the head word, but it has also the second meaning: be in water or swim. And it can be only reflexive, so it's listed as sublemma with reflexive label in uh, parentheses. Buditi, the wake. The first meaning is to interrupt someone's sleep, bring them to a wakeful state, and it can be only transitive. While buditi se, meaning to get out of bed after sleeping, they believe it can be only reflexive, so it is sublemma. Uh, regarding reciprocal, uh, reciprocal verbs, uh, they are treated as sublemmas. I think that uh, I skipped. Yeah, uh, here we have this solution when say is listed next to the object pronouns. For example, wash, someone, something, say. And then we have definition of transitive verb to remove dirt by rinsing in a liquid. I said about uh, reciprocal. So also here, lubiti, kiss. Uh, it is listed next to the object uh, pronouns, kiss, someone, something, say, and we can, don't know if it's reciprocal or if it's a proper verb, so there is no any further description. In crow uh, reflexiva tantum, reciprocal, and derived reflexives are treated as lemmas, while here the proper reflexive, you can see, if you can see this fourth uh, meaning, it's wash, and it has definition to remove dirt from oneself with water and soap. So there is no any uh, indication uh, relating to uh, reflexivity and instead of the definition. From the definition, we know that it's a reflexive verb. And also from the example, the swimmer washed himself with a brush. In e glava, only reflexiva tantum are, reflex uh, are lemmas, while other reflexives are senses. For example, the second sense is to take offense and reflexive label. And uh, the fourth meaning is to insult each other. So it is reciprocal with also with reflexive uh, label. In the Czech Valex, uh, all reflexive verbs have the attribute reflex verb and they, the reflexiva tantum has the value tantum, while other reflexives have uh, the value derived and they are further classified into seven categories based on syntactic operations. In our database, since it is a dynamic data database that offers uh, flexibility to record as many verbs as we want, we decided to treat them as a separate lemmas and to introduce the label tantum derived reciprocal, same as in, um, in Valex. So in this way, uh, users can easily filter the categories that they are interested in, and also it opens the possibility to improve the description in the future, for example, to include passive and middle voice, and also syntactic operations as in the Czech Valex. It looks like this. We here we have buditi, wake. Its definitions are 
to interrupt someone's sleep, uh, to arouse feelings or states from the past, to arouse a particular state uh, or mood in someone. And the reflexive verb, the separate entry, buditise, uh, reflexivity box is checked, as you can see. And the definitions are to stop sleeping, to bring oneself into a wakeful state, and to come into a state of liveliness, to move or activ activate oneself after a period of passivity or inactivity. And the analysis uh, boatisse is reflexiva tantum, to be afraid. Uh, we have an example, I'm afraid of heights. I uh, is an NP in the nominative case with the role of the experiencer. Boimse is ve with the value ref tantum and uh, the heights NP in the gen genitive case stimulus. The right reflexives, for example, wake up. If the child uh, wakes, up, wakes up because of teething, uh, we have the child NP in the nominative case. And here we have two roles, experiencer and involuntary uh, agent. Then buditis is derived reflexive because of teething uh, causer. Reciprocal, uh, the couple was kissing passionately. The couple NP in the nominative case with the role of the agent. Se Lubio uh, has the lab label uh, ref recip. And uh, also she is passionately kissing with her new boyfriend. Here we have with her new boyfriend. It is a PP uh, and the semantic role is a co-agent. Regarding the light verb constructions, the situation for us is more uh, complex because we don't know how can we be, be sure if a verb is semantically full and or semantically bleached. Also, is a noun an object or part of the predicate? Does a verb assign the semantic role itself, predicative noun, or both uh, of them? So we look also at valency lexicons. In Crow Alex, we have a verb, it's bring. And then in the definition uh, field, we have a simple verb equivalent. It's to decide. Uh, a frame is empty, and the example is light verb construction, to bring a decision, meaning to make a decision. But in the same manner, verbal idioms are also treated. Bring, to give to someone who has not made any effort, and in the example we have to bring on a plate in Croatian, means to hand, to hand something to someone on a silver platter. In the Valix, first meaning is semantically full verb. Uh, we have frame, actor, obligatory in the nominative case, patient, obligatory in the accusative case, and beneficiary, non-obligatory in the dative case. And the second meaning is, meaning is complex predicates, and it also has frame, actor, obligatory in the nominative case, and a compound phrase, which is obligatory in the accusative. And under light verb constructions, or nouns that can be used in this position are listed. And you can click on a noun and it directs you to the uh, valency frame of a noun. So we decided to do like this. We have here highly schematic verb, uh, meaning to conduct, to conduct, carry out. Uh, it is only light verb, and it has three definitions. First is light verb that with the, with the verbal noun means to perform or carry out some activity. And the example is our engineers conducted tests of the seabed. Here we have the engineers, NP in the nominative case with the role of the agent. And uh, light verb we labeled as LV, light verb, so we can be easily filtered in the future. Then we have the testing, it's NP in the accusative, and we didn't assign semantic uh, role, but lexical units are obligatory, so you can conduct an anal analysis, uh, cleaning, diagnostic, distribution, delivery, and so on. And then uh, the seabed, here is NP in the genitive case with the role of the team, which we are not sure about. The second meaning is light verb that with a deverbal noun means to cause a certain state or feeling. For example, she, she claimed that her parents had exerted tremendous pressure on her. Uh, here, we, as a predicative now, we can have a pressure, hunt, chase uh, in Croatian. And the last meaning, light verb that with the verbal noun means to hold a certain position. And the example is in the early 70s, he also held the position of club president. Uh, in Croatian, you can held duty or uh, service. What we are not sure about is should we assign semantic role to the uh, NP in the accusative? Since a light verb is incapable of assigning one, so we decided to leave it empty, but maybe due to argument sharing, it could be also the team. And also we had problem with this uh, seabed, this uh, NP in the genitive case. Uh, if it is, a pro, uh, it is a complement of a noun, if it is, then it would be treated ispitivanya podmorja, testing of the seabed as one constituent, it would be NP in the accusative. 
But also due to argument sharing, maybe a predicative noun transfers its argument structure to light verb, and it could be assigned uh, the role of the team. And also if we substitute a light verb construction, for example, the engineers conducted testing of the seabed with a semantically full verb, the engineers tested the seabed, then this NP in the genitive case comes into the position of uh, the direct object in the accusative, and it has the role uh, of the team. I would be happy if you give me a solution, and that's it. Uh, regarding verbal idioms, sometimes in dictionaries, verbal idioms are not listed. Nouns and adjectives are, but verbal uh, not. In some dictionaries, there is a field phraseology. We have an idiom, for example, cell wisdom in Croatian, and definition to give unsolicited advice. And in Croatian Web Dictionary, we have also definition uh, uh, to give it your all, uh, meaning to do everything within one's power, and example from the corpora. Uh, and the same manner is also in uh, Iglava, where we have a field idioms and collocation, and also have an idiom, this definition, and uh, an example from the corpora. Uh, in Czech Valex, also verbal idioms have their valency frames. For example, hotja zahlavu, it's actor obligatory in nominative case, patient obligatory in the accusative case, and dependent for zim obligatory. And this place for uh, cases, we have zahlavu, those fixed elements. In Valex, at the moment, uh, verbion at the moment is like this. We have idiom, prati ruke, English idiom, wash one's hands of something, definition in Croatian and English, Disclaim responsibility or involvement in a matter. And uh, an example, the international community is washing its hands of the Dayton Agreement today. We don't have, at the moment, further analysis, but we would like maybe something like this. So the international community, NP in the nominative case with the role of the agent, and pere ruke is one constituent, labeled maybe as verbal idiom with, uh, of the Dayton Agreement, PP, odd plus, from plus genitive, with the role uh, of the team. And as a conclusion, we still believe that our decision to treat reflexive verbs as separate lemmas is a good one since it, uh, it uh, makes easier further analysis of re reflexive verbs and introduction of syntactic operation. Also, uh, by labeling light verbs as LV, we believe that it's easier to list all uh, verbs that, have, that are used as light verbs. And also by introducing lexical units, we believe that we improve the lexicon's uh, usefulness. Regarding verbal idioms, we are waiting for a happier future, maybe for more uh, collaborates who can do that to be only dedicated to verbal idioms. But at the moment, we build a translation into English will be the greatest advantage since there are no publicly openly available resources that have translation into English, let alone any other language in uh, Croatia. So that's it. Thank you.